guys, I'm Cecilia Jane and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to ship out smaller items. Where this video is going to show you guys how to ship out smaller items such as pins, jewelry, small sculptures, and things like that. If you have your own business or Etsy shop, this is going to be the perfect tutorial for you if you're like kind of unsure how to ship things out. I'm going to show you guys what kind of materials you need, how to package it, and how to buy and print out a label from this website I use called Shippo. This video isn't sponsored, I just really really enjoy Shippo and I found it very useful to use. So in this video I'm going to be showing the example of how I mail out my pins. I'm hoping to make this a series where I show you guys how to mail out like small Smaller things, larger things, larger paintings, smaller paintings, etc. This is where we're gonna start with today. I know sometimes like mailing things out can be intimidating, the post office can be scary, and you kind of just don't know what to do, so this is gonna be a great place to start. Using Shippo and like printing out your label takes away all the hassle of like going to the post office, waiting in line, talking to them, trying to figure out what to do, not knowing prices up front, so Shippo kind of eliminates all of that. And kind of my favorite thing is like when I'm at the post office and I literally just get to walk in front of the line and drop off my package and I kind of wish like I want to tell all these people I'm like hey go to Shippo like you don't have to wait in line like you could just you can just print out the thing and like not have to wait in line it's so great so yeah and I don't know about you guys but I get kind of nervous like I said when I don't know the prices up front I don't know anything and I'm just like help me so this kind of eliminates all of that stress but yeah without further ado if you want to know how to ship out like smaller items stay tuned okay so now we're just gonna go over the supplies needed I'm gonna start with required supplies and then I'll go into optional supplies so this first required supply may seem a bit obvious, but it's going to be the item that you are shipping. Today I'm going to be shipping one of my pins that you can find in my Etsy. I'll link my Etsy down below if you're interested in one. So next you'll just need a bubble mailer. This one is 4x8 and I will link it down below if you are interested. Um, they also have like 6x10 bubble mailers and a lot of different options for sizes. It just kind of depends on what you're shipping. But yeah, bubble mailers are great because they have a layer of bubble wrap, so it's like an extra layer of protection. So next you'll just want some bubble wrap. This is just going to ensure that the product's not going to be moving around. It'll keep it kind of snug, especially if it's somewhat fragile. This is just a larger type of bubble wrap um, and I will link it in the description for you guys. Next you'll want a scale of some sorts. Uh, this is just a kitchen scale that I got really cheap. It measures in a few different units which is nice. It's just small and portable and like I said really cheap. So you'll just need a scale to enter the weight of your packaged item. And like with everything in this video I will link it in the description. So originally I was going to put this in the optional section but I do feel like it is pretty required especially if you have your own business or something. You should really try to have your own business cards. This just helps to keep the customer like have your business in mind and you know have your business card floating around. And I have two, uh, one for my personal art and one for my pet portraits since I do quite a bit of pet portraits. So really quickly, there's just a few items I kind of forgot to film visuals of, but you probably have them lying around and they're pretty universal. So you'll just want packing tape, ruler, and scissors. So these next few elements are pretty optional, but they're just kind of things to help your package look more cute, uh, make it feel more personal. Um, of course, it kind of depends on what kind of business uh, aesthetic you're going for, but I just like including little extra notes, little stickers, little things like that. Uh, just helps it feel more personal. So the first little required item is just some type of note. So I'm just showing some cute little notepads that I have that I write notes to the customers on. Um, you know, you can write things like, thank you for purchasing. I hope you love your order. Um, maybe depending how big the note is and how much you want to write, maybe more about the product or your inspirations or things like that. Um, you could offer coupons. You could politely ask for a review. Um, just your chance to kind of interact with the customer and thank them for purchasing something. So the next little optional bit is just washi tape. I absolutely love washi tape and I'm kind of showing off my collection here, but yeah, I think it's a really great way to, again, just add some personalization and cute touches to your order. Um, you can tape different things down in the order and also like if you're decorating an envelope, um, you can decorate the outside with washi tape. When you're using a bubble mailer, I probably wouldn't recommend it because I don't think it would stick as well, but with a paper envelope, you know, you can decorate the outside. Um, again, just tape things down. It just, it looks so cute and I love washi tape, so yeah. So again, this is optional, but it'll just make your life so much easier. If you have address labels, you just pop that sticker on. You don't have to write it every single time and you can just make them cute and personalized. I also always include a little bit of confetti. I have star confetti and then I have some seasonal confetti like fake snow and bats for Halloween. It's just a fun little touch and I just pop it into the bubble mailer. Next, I just include a little coupon code for next time they shop at my store. I think it kind of just entices them to come back again. 
Next is just any little optional promotional material you want to provide. I have a Patreon, so I just send out a little card letting people know that I have a Patreon and that they can join it if they want. So I usually throw in a few little stickers, um, a few for my shop, and then I also have this sticker I made that says I support small businesses. I think it's just a nice little reminder that supporting small businesses is really great and you deserve a gold star for it. Like I mentioned, I like to always try to decorate whatever the order is in, whether it be the envelope or the bubble mailer. Um, so I'll use like markers, watercolors, etc. The bubble mailers are plastic though, so I find that the acrylic markers work really well on them. Okay, so now we're just going to go to the packaging portion of this video. All right guys, so I've got everything I need here kind of laid out. Um, I'm sorry if this looks a little cluttered, but yeah, that's just kind of how I do things. So first what I do is I just gather like the extra little goodies that I give. Um, so I just have like a, I support small business sticker that I give out and like I give away like two extra stickers. So I just put those in like a little plastic baggie like this. Um, this is most commonly sold with jewelry. So that's where you can find these. In that baggie with the stickers, I also include my business cards and then the little note that says to like join my Patreon. And I just kind of tuck those in the back because I put things in the order that like I want people to see them. So these are kind of like things you look at after. And so this coupon I made um, is a little too big to fit in this bag. So this is just gonna be set aside in there. So I put some of this like star confetti in this bags. And then I also put it in the bubble mailing. So depending on what you're mailing out, whether it be like jewelry or pins, etc., cetera, um, I like to have it like on something sturdier. So you may already have a backing card that's sturdy enough. And if you do, that's fine. I like to include a slightly larger piece of like um, I think this is called chipboard, but you could use cardstock or a thinner cardboard. This is kind of what this is. But yeah, just to like kind of give it some structure. So honestly, how I package things kind of differs each time I do it, but it's about the same kind of layout. Um, but again, I just kind of put like what I want people to find first. So like the product, the note, the little goodies, and then like coupon codes and things like that. So I'm just going to tape this stuff to the back. And then the little pin I'm just going to set on this. And then you get your bubble wrap, and then you're going to want to kind of roughly measure where to cut off so that it wraps around each side. And again, this is going to vary from like product to product. This is just what I'm doing for the pin right now. I'm just going to tape that down with a little bit of washi tape so that it's centered. Make sure you use like a tape that's not going to rip that's super strong. And then, yeah, I kind of just tape this bubble wrap together so that nothing falls out kind of put it in like a little pocket. So here's the trick of it. You're gonna want it to fit into this mailer, obviously, so you may have to like tape down things extra to get it like thinner. The nice thing about bubble mailers is they are already like protected a little bit. Um, so this is just kind of just a little bit of extra layer of protection. And then you're just gonna push that in there. Mine are self-adhesive, so I'm just going to adhere them with the adhesive they have. If yours don't have that, obviously just use a little bit of packing tape. Okay, so once you have it all packaged, you are just going to take the dimensions of it with a ruler. So you're gonna take the length, which is the longest part, then you're gonna take the width, which is the shortest part, and then you're gonna take the height, which um, you're just gonna kind of hold it like this and kind of measure. Um, if it's like one and a quarter, just round up to one and a half, just to be sure. And then you're gonna weigh it. I usually do it in grams just to like make sure it's very exact. But the nice thing about Shippo is that you can change the units. So whatever your scale is, Shippo probably has that. But yeah, once you have those measurements, then you just head on over to Shippo and I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay guys, so you are just gonna Google Shippo. It's spelled like this, S-H-I-P-P-O. And then if you don't have an account, just make an account. It's super easy, really quick and free. Okay, so now you're just gonna go to create label. Okay, so now you're just going to enter your information and then the other person's information. And a really nice feature that I like about Shippo is when you're entering the street line, it'll give you like suggestions of like different locations. So as you start to enter it, it'll give you like all the locations you can ship to that have the information you entered. So it'll like fill in a lot of information for you, which is nice because let's say someone messed up their zip code with just like one number, which sometimes does happen. You can kind of see that Shippo corrected that. So that's a nice feature to have. Um, 
I don't have that happen a lot, but when it does happen, it's really nice. So now you're just gonna press save and continue. So now you're just gonna click custom dimensions and you're gonna enter your length, which I said is the, the longest measurement. Mine is roughly about six. It might be a little under that, but like I said, I like to round up just a touch. The width is about four and a half. And again, the height varies, but um, it's usually about one or a little bit more, but I just put one and a half just to be sure. And then here's what I said about, they have different units for measurement. So I just click grams. The package is about 30 grams, but I'm just gonna put 35 um just by the time you add the label and stuff it'll add a little bit of weight um it's probably not gonna be 35 but just in case and then you'll press save and then they have these different options like add signature confirmation uh shipment insurance blah 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 um i never use any of that i think it costs a little bit more if you do but if you have something really important maybe look into that and then it's just going to give you some different rates i always just use the cheapest one i've always had good luck with it uh, knock on wood, but um, there are some other options as well like if you want it in one day two days things like that But honestly the people should get it in five days sometimes less Oftentimes they do get it less and it's only like less than three dollars So I think that's great and from my experience when I go to the post office um, I feel like it's usually quite a bit more and you just have to wait in lines So this kind of eliminates all of that you really just get to like go into the post office and drop it off You don't have to wait in lines. You don't have to deal with like people <laughs> interaction um so now you're just gonna click buy confirm purchase and i already have my payment information in there but um obviously you guys will have to add your payment information so now you're just going to download this label and print it so i just used like a sheet of computer paper just some cheap paper it doesn't have to be fancy um the only thing i would say is to change is if you're doing a smaller bubble mailer like me you might have to change the scale of it so it's going to be in your print settings and the scale you'll just click custom and change it your printer settings should be showing the label on like a standard eight and a half by 11 sheet so you can kind of use that for scale to see how large the label is going to print and then I just click print. And yeah, now it should be printing. Something really nice about this too is it gives you the tracking information so you can give that to customers. Um, you can also download it if you need to, print another one if you need to, it saves the label. You can also um, refund the label. Like for example, if you didn't send something out or it came back or you just can't use it, you can refund it if it wasn't used, which is really nice. Um, you can create another label to the same address. Like there's a lot of nice settings, so. But yeah, so now we're gonna go back to the table and I'm gonna show you guys how to finish packaging it. Okay, so I'm just gonna quickly cut this out. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a white stroke around it and then I'll show you what to do next. So what you're gonna do next is you're just gonna get your packing tape and then you're gonna kind of measure um, the length of it and add a little bit more. So probably like an inch to each side or more. Cut that. And then what I do is I just take the tape and I just kind of center it so that it's just kind of centered on there. And then I have some kind of control of where to put it. And then I just place it in the middle. Once I got a spot I like it, then I press down. And now I'm just gonna add another strip to this side and another strip to that side. So adding this tape just adds a little bit of like extra protection against rain and weather and things like that. It's not 100% foolproof, but it's just a step you take to kind of, to just kind of help it not like get messed up by the rain and stuff. Okay, so now you have your package. Um, the last thing to do is kind of decorate the outside if you want to. Um, I decorate envelopes a lot, but obviously you can't really decorate this part because it's got the tape. Um, you could decorate it beforehand and then put the tape, but um, I just kind of decorate the back. So I'm just gonna take my markers and just kind of draw some quick little flowers on the back of this. Okay, so again, this is kind of nothing compared to like what I do to my envelopes, but I feel like it's just another cute little touch to just make it more personalized. So that is the finished kind of packaged envelope. All right, guys, so thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it somewhat helpful. Let me know down below in the comments if you found it helpful and what you're shipping out. Also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and again, found it helpful. Like I said, I wanna do a series of like how to mail out paintings and then like larger items and things like that. Um, so just let me know if you guys are interested and let me know down in the comments specifically what you wanna see be sure to hit that subscribe button i am trying to post more regularly hit the bell if you want a notification anytime i post and yeah again thank you guys so much for watching bye so now as always it's time to thank my wonderful patreons for supporting me as an artist they get some awesome rewards in return like different prints and stickers etc if that sounds like something that interests you check out the link in the description